welcome back to The Expert's Edge. Y'all ever get that itch to just ditch the rat race and go off the grid? I'm talking full Walden Pond style, minus the tuberculosis. Well, lucky for you, tucked away in the forgotten crevices of this fine country are some little hamlets just waiting for some fresh blood. We're talking towns so far removed from civilization, you'll think you woke up in the Twilight Zone, or at least in an M. Night Shyamalan film, the early ones, before he started sucking. So join me on a journey to the most secluded small towns in America, where the Wi-Fi is spotty but the conspiracy theories flow as free as the river they probably dump toxic waste into, just don't drink the water. Have you ever wanted to get away from it all and hide out in some podunk town in the middle of nowhere? Me too. That's why I've made it my mission to visit the most isolated bergs I can find in this country. After all, there's nothing quite like being the only stranger in a one-stop light town. So let's get started on the top most secluded towns in the United States of America. Red River, New Mexico, is one of my all-time favorite little hideaways. This place sprang up in the 1870s when gold-hungry prospectors swarmed the hills. They named the town after a stream with water the color of blood because they were a morbid, unimaginative bunch. By the turn of the century, the gold had dried up along with most of the population. But don't feel too bad for Red River. Tourism saved the day, and now people flock to this secluded mountain burg for the trout fishing, skiing, and extra-wide Main Street that looks like a movie set. The closest city is Santa Fe, a solid two to three hours away, and in between is a whole lot of nothing. Point Roberts, Washington is even more cut off. Point Roberts has to be the weirdest isolated place I've discovered. Created by some treaty back in the day, this little nipple of land got cut off from the US and stuck below Canada. The only way in is through Canada. So to get anywhere else in America, you have to cross the border twice. Two hours north to Vancouver, two hours south to Seattle. The town is on a little peninsula south of the border, but on the wrong side of an inlet, a geographic fluke. There have been movements to secede and become part of Canada, which tells you how weird the setup is. No wonder the population here is only around 1,300 people. At least the locals have a good sense of humor about their strange geographical situation. I've always wanted to retire to a place like Point Roberts, but then I'm the kind of weirdo who considers two hours of international driving just to get milk and eggs, the very definition of charming inconvenience, different strokes. Next up is Caribou, Maine. Forget what you know about secluded towns. Caribou makes all other hidden hamlets look connected. This place is so far off the grid, your phone won't even work. To get here from anywhere, you're looking at a multi-hour slog through dense forest on winding roads. Why would anyone live in such an isolated spot? You ask, beats me. The locals are probably secretive survivalists or wanted fugitives. All I know is once I arrived in Caribou, I felt like I'd traveled back in time. The downtown looks like it hasn't changed since the 1800s. The only way in or out is a treacherous drive. Want to visit friends or go to the movies? Too bad. The closest city is a three hour drive through the woods, and that's in summer. Come winter, you'll be snowed in for months in your little cabin in the frigid north, wondering why you ever came to this forsaken place. Still, there's something charming about such seclusion. No pollution, no traffic, no obnoxious neighbors, just fresh air stunning scenery, and a simplicity lost in the bustle of modern life. Maybe Caribou's not such a bad place after all, at least for a little while. But if I don't post again soon, send help. The wolves are howling, my firewood is running low, and I think I'm going a little stir-crazy up here. Crested Butte, Colorado. Crested Butte calls itself the last great Colorado ski town, but I prefer to think of it as the place people go when they're sick of other people. Tucked away in the Gunnison National Forest, it's a whopping four and a half hours from Denver. The winter snowfall means the one road in and out gets closed for parts of the season. So you're stuck, perfect. After the Ute Indians wisely ditched the valley, a few brave European settlers wandered in during the 1870s in search of gold and land to trap beavers. By the 1880s, the beaver population was decimated, but the gold kept people around. Once the gold dried up too, the town transitioned to a tourism economy. Now the only trapping going on is tourists coming for the skiing and summer recreation. Crested Butte has retained a quirky, isolated vibe with only 1,500 year-round residents and an extra T in its name for flair. The Victorian era downtown has become kitschy, full of art galleries, craft stores, and an inordinate number of businesses using Crested Butte in their name. 
For entertainment, there's the annual Alley Loop and Mardi Gras festivals, where people get really into it because, well, options are limited when you're snowed in. While secluded mountain towns aren't for everyone, Crested Butte wears its isolation like a badge of honor. The residents are happy to be stranded together for parts of the year in their little piece of paradise. For the rest of us, it's an escape from the daily grind to a place of natural beauty where you can avoid most signs of civilization and other humans. Tosumchari, New Mexico is the town that inspired this list. I was researching another story and stumbled across Tucumcari, noted how far it was from anything else, and a light bulb went on. Tucumcari is on old Route 66, and it's like the whole town got stuck in a 1940s time warp. Everything's vintage, from the architecture to the classic cars cruising Main Street. To give you an idea of just how isolated this place is, the closest cities, Albuquerque and Amarillo, are both about two hours away, and Santa Fe is a whopping four hours south. And what's in between? A whole lot of empty desert and scrub. My kind of place. This little town is smack dab in the middle of nowhere. The closest cities are hours away in any direction, through empty desert and scrub as far as the eye can see. If you get stranded here, you're in for a long, thirsty walk. Tucumcari's remote location is both a blessing and a curse. Sure, the starry night skies are stunning, and you can drive for miles without seeing another soul. But if you run out of milk on a Sunday night, you're out of luck. Part of Tucumcari's charm is that it's a living relic of mid-century Americana. The architecture, signage, and vibe have barely changed since the Eisenhower era. You half expect the fonts to come striding down Main Street. Tucumcari clings to its Route 66 heritage and retro motels like the Blue Swallow offer a nostalgic glimpse into road trip life of yesteryear. Stuck in the past and stuck in the middle of nowhere, Tucumcari marches to the beat of its own drummer, quirky, kitschy, and stubbornly unchanged. This secluded little town is a perfect escape from the rat race, as long as you don't mind going without a decent espresso for a few days. Here are some tips for the intrepid explorer for anyone wanting to visit these out-of-the-way spots. Bring supplies. These towns are hours from real civilization, so stock up on essentials before heading into the hinterlands. Unless you want to subsist on beef jerky and pork rinds, that is. Don't expect amenities. Lucky if they have one stoplight, let alone a proper motel or restaurant. Be prepared to rough it. A tent and camping stove may come in handy. Talk to the locals. Getting to know the local color is half the fun of visiting these oddball towns. Strike up a conversation with Bubba at the gas station or Bertha at the diner. They've probably got some stories to tell about life on the fringe. So if you're looking to drop off the grid for a while and see a side of America most folks miss, pack your bags and head out on an adventure into the heart of seclusion. Just don't forget to send a postcard to let the rest of us know you made it out alive. And there you have it, folks. The secret towns of America, hidden away like embarrassed relatives at a family reunion. Sure, they may seem a little odd or standoffish at first, but once you get to know them, you realize they're just misunderstood. Each has their own quirks and charms waiting to be discovered if you're willing to take a detour off the main highway of life. So the next time you're road tripping across this great nation of ours, think about pulling over and saying, howdy neighbor to one of these secluded settlements. Just be polite and don't overstay your welcome. They may be hospitable, but they still like their privacy. Happy trails.